students uh, in the since last two classes we are looking into the results uh, that has um, some I mean something to do with uh, dependence on the initial condition. In the previous class uh, we stated uh, towards the end uh, a theorem uh, which says that uh, when you have a local existence um, where uh, is the uh, I mean or uh, what is the time interval right um, where the local solution will exist and uh, as, as per the theorem we will always find a small ball or a neighborhood around the point around the initial point x0 where the solution will exist locally right. So, we basically wrote down this result let me just uh, uh, write it for you. So, we wrote down this result now. So, we wrote down this norm of x t minus x 0 uh, is less than or equal to integral from t 0 to t norm of f of s comma x 0 norm e to the power l t minus s d of s right. So, from here of course, you can use this uh, triangle uh, this inequality property to, to bound x t between uh, two values. So, at least we know what will be the radius right. Um, there is a small uh, uh, particular I mean a, a particular case that you can derive from here is that if uh, you have if uh, the initial value problem if the right hand side if the right hand side of the IVP IVP is autonomous 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 means uh, f is independent of uh, t actually. So, it is a function of x, but it is not a function of t. So, autonomous then uh, you can write x t minus x 0 is less than or equal to integral from uh, t 0 to t norm of f of x 0 norm e to the power l uh, t minus s d of s. So, since it is not a function of t if you have an autonomous system it may be that uh, you are not given an autonomous system it is a non autonomous system. So, then it will be a function of t as well as x, um, but if it is an autonomous system then f is independent of t. So, then in that case you have uh, f of norm of f of x 0 which does not involve t. So, you take it out from the um, integral because integral is with respect to uh, with respect to s and this is just a function of x 0. So, if I take it out then it will be norm of f of x 0 uh, integral from t 0 to t e to the power l t minus s. So, I can just do the integration and it will be e to the power l t minus s uh, divided by um, minus of l right and then integral from uh, t 0 to t. So, if I put uh, uh, if I put, so this is norm of f of x 0. So, if I put uh, s is equals to t then it will be 0 and then uh, this is 1 and then here I have t minus t 0. So, I can write e to the power. So, e to the power uh, l t minus t 0 minus of 1 by l. This is the required uh, answer here. So, basically if we have an autonomous system then our x t minus x 0 can be further simplified to this and uh, I wrote down in the previous class when I mentioned the theorem 2 that you can write t which is equal to t of r. Uh, here you can actually specifically write what will be your t of r. So, in order to write t of r you can do this. So, for an autonomous system for an autonomous function f for an autonomous autonomous f autonomous m o u s autonomous f uh, this uh, uh, autonomous f let me just erase it for an autonomous f uh, the expression the expression what was the expression in the previous class? We had t 0 to t and then we had norm of f of uh, s comma x 0 
e to the power l t minus s d of s equals to r right this is what we wrote in the previous class so here if your f is autonomous then it will become very straightforward what will it be it will become so it will be f of x0 that norm will come out always out of the integral and then we'll have integral from t0 to t e to the power l t minus s d of s equals to capital r now when you integrate we just saw that what will be this value this value will be e to the power l t minus t0 minus of 1 by r by l equals to um, capital r now you multiply by capital um, l on both sides and you divide by norm of f of x0 assuming that it is non zero then you bring 1 on the left hand side uh, on the right hand side then you take log right so everything will be reduced to uh, if i may write in one line so this will become uh, uh, this will become uh, is um, t minus s na? okay there is a small correction that we can do t minus s so this is capital t where is that slide go okay the slide is here this is capital t right so this is capital t this is capital t and uh, again this is capital t the in a flow i wrote down small t so capital t minus t0 so what I am saying is you just write e to the power l uh, t minus t0 uh, is equals to l r by norm of f x0 plus 1 take the log on both sides. So this will become log of e so that will be gone and we divide by l. So this is t minus t0 is equals to 1 by l log to the base e within bracket l r by norm of f of x 0 plus 1 l is a constant uh, norm of f of x 0 is constant 1 is anyways constant so this is obviously a function of r and t 0 is also a constant so i will bring the t 0 on the right hand side so this is t t 0 plus 1 by l we write the entire logarithm here L R norm of f of x 0 plus 1. So, this is that capital T which is function of R. So, I told you that we can determine this maximum interval um, for which maximum time interval for which uh, the solution x t will always remain in that neighborhood of x 0. So, at least for the autonomous system we can write down this value that what will be that capital T right? because your f of x 0 will come out otherwise you have to know what is your f of s comma x 0 so that you can evaluate this integral right. So, in the previous theorem um, we had uh, this inequality where we had this inequality let me show you a side calculation. So, this is the example here. So, where we had this inequality x t minus x 0 is less than or equal to integral from t 0 to t norm of f of s comma x 0. So, here we have to evaluate this integral e to the power l uh, t minus s d of s. So, this you can write further t 0 to t uh, f of s x 0 and uh, we can write e to the power l small t can be um, bounded by capital T. Uh, minus small s d of s. Now, from here you still have to evaluate this f of s comma x 0 that norm multiplied by exponential then it will give you a some expression and from there you can calculate capital T or if it is an autonomous system then this s is no longer there and everything comes out and therefore calculating that r becomes fairly simple. But the bottom line is that what we can write is that capital T for which we have a maximum uh, interval of existence such that the solution x t remains in the neighborhood of x 0 and this is one such example or uh, calculation which works for at least uh, autonomous system. If it is non autonomous system then as I said you need to evaluate this integral to get that to get that capital T alright. Uh, let me uh, give you one example also. Uh, so, if I write one example. 
So, we will take again autonomous system uh, because I want to write uh, capital T in terms of numbers right. So, let us take one example uh, this IVP initial value problem dx dt equals to x square and uh, x at 0 equals to 1. So, obviously, if you integrate this uh, dx dt you will end up getting x t equals to um, minus 1 by x uh, and uh, on the right hand side you have t plus c. So, ultimately we substitute x equals to 0 at, at t is equals to 0 x 0 is 1. So, c will become uh, minus 1. So, I can write the solution as 1 by 1 minus t. Yeah, this is possible. So, from here we can write down the solution x t equals to 1 minus t. Now, this problem you can write t is defined on in, uh, this uh, uh, initial value problem is defined on entire real line, but when you are writing down the solution that means, for what t this solution actually exists, it will be from minus infinity to 1 because at t equals to 1 as uh, t tends to 1 x t tends to infinity and therefore, uh, the solution the solution exists on uh, minus infinity to 1 i e t must belong to minus infinity to 1 because at t is equals to 1 it blows to um, plus infinity ok. So, now what will be our maximum interval of existence such that it remains in the neighborhood of uh, t equals to 0. So, let us write down uh, the domain omega let uh, uh, let omega is equals to all such x such that mod of x minus 1 that is our initial value. So, um, we want the solution uh, to be in the neighborhood of x 0 that means 1. So, no mod of x minus 1 is less than or equal to r. Um, so, to determine r we need to know our Lipschitz constant. Uh, the Lipschitz constant the Lipschitz the Lipschitz constant constant uh, can be given by uh, by uh, capital L equals to 2 times 1 plus r right this ok. Now, um, what we are going to do, uh, so this is this is very simple to see I can just show you, uh, you have uh, f of uh, t comma x it is not it is not that difficult f of t comma y. So, basically uh, we only have to take mod not not norm. So, basically what do we get? We get x square minus y square. So, here you can write uh, x plus y and x minus y. Now, if you look at this, so from here um, you can write uh, norm of a uh, mod of x minus y and this is mod of x plus mod of y. So, basically your mod of x is bounded by r plus 1. So, mod of x and mod of y they both will be bounded by r plus 1 and therefore, you have 2 times r plus 1. So, here I have 2 times uh, r plus 1, 1 plus r does not matter uh, 1 plus r mod of x minus y. So, this is your Lipschitz constant right and uh, um, we have the solution in the neighborhood of x 0 as long as. So, from previous theorem previous theorem uh, we find that x t belong to omega that means, in the neighborhood of x 0 if uh, t is less than or equal to uh, if t is less than or equal to capital T right less than or equal to capital T less than or equal to capital T, where 
where capital T, there is also a formula for capital T, we wrote in the previous term. So, that was uh, capital T equals to 1 by, let me write down the formula at T, um, what was it? T0 plus 1 by L uh, log of L R by norm of f of x 0 plus 1. So, t 0 was uh, I believe t 0 was 1 and uh, nay t 0 was 0 x at t 0 is 1 uh, 1 by L was 2 times 1 plus r log of uh, 2 times 1 plus r times r um, and uh, f at x 0. So, f is x square at x 0 it will be 1. So, divided by 1 plus 1. So, ultimately you can write 1 by 2 1 plus r log of 2 r times 1 plus r plus 1. So, because the solution is known, we also know the exact value of t star say of this upper bound. So, here uh, the solution is known. So, we can write down the our uh, capital T and uh, we also know the exact value of capital T right and uh, therefore, uh, so here, so this is our T and uh, because we also know the solution because we also know the solution right x t equals to 1 by 1 minus t we know uh, the solution we also know the solution solution we also uh, because we also know the solution we can determine the exact value of t say t star uh, and uh, and uh, it is given by t star equals to r by r plus 1 right and uh, from here if you plot and uh, both t and t star can be plotted as the function of r for small r they agree quite well but for r we see that t is rather uh, um, where, i mean large uh, crude estimate that means uh, it, it is a little bit uh, away from the t star so we can plot these two uh, let me write here uh, this is our uh, uh, origin. So, we can plot r here and uh, t uh, upwards. So, both t and t star are plotted as a function of r function of r for small r for small r they agree quite well but for r get right a capital r get right equal to 1 we see that we see that t is rather uh, is rather a crude estimate, a crude estimate of t star. That means it is quite the deviation is quite much. So if uh, if you plot t and t star along this, so here you have one, is one, two, three, four, five. Here we have uh, zero point two, zero point four, zero point six. 0.8 and so on. So, this will be uh, so this is our t whereas this 
this will be our t star when r is um, greater than uh, 1 right so for smaller values of r uh, that means uh, if you are in a very close neighborhood that means mod of x minus 1 less than r right so if you are taking a larger uh, r that means uh, you are basically considering a bigger ball or bigger neighborhood so then in that case your um, t which you are considering is rather a crude estimate so it's not uh, basically um, agreeing with whatever uh, uh, we have uh, we have uh, done from the theorem basically and if you are considering a small uh, value of r that means if you are in a very close interval uh, of the neighborhood of the uh, of the point x0 uh, then in that case your manual uh, calculation that is t star which we have obtained r uh, which is r by cap, capital r by r plus 1 and the one which we are obtaining from the theorem uh, they agree so basically for smaller values of r uh, you can get the uh, t star directly from the uh, from the solution itself because we know the solution so we know where it exists right so this is uh, this is the uh, theorem that we wanted to talk about um, if we have uh, let's say uh, a non autonomous system i can um, maybe uh, include uh, let me state one more so there is one more example but uh, i can put it in uh, in the um, assignment or uh, uh, as a extra lecture material so first i want to state one more theorem before i can uh, uh, i can talk about that example so one more theorem or one more result is this which is uh, basically regular perturbation perturbation and linearization and linearization right so what is this um, so far we have a, we have a studied that if you perturb the right hand side a little bit or if you perturb the initial condition then we saw that the solution they actually diverge exponentially even a small perturbation right and uh, here uh, we assume that the perturbation can be parameterized by a quantity epsilon so here we assume that the perturbation assume that uh, the perturbations perturbations can be parameterized by uh, a quantity or a number by a quantity epsilon which belongs to i epsilon with uh, i epsilon a neighborhood a neighborhood of the origin in r right? so then to indicate the dependence the dependence of this parameter the dependence of this uh, to indicate the dependence of this parameter we shall use f epsilon t comma x and uh, x epsilon 0 the case epsilon equals to 0 is the unperturbed perturbed problem so uh, so we identify f 0 and x 0 0 by f and 0 right so 
So, basically we have assumed that f and x 0 epsilon f epsilon and x 0 epsilon depend continuously. So, when you are including this um, uh, perturbation parameter epsilon that means uh, your f and x 0 they are continuously depending on this depending uh, depends continuously 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 on epsilon right and uh, this dependence and uh, this dependence is uniform for all t comma x in i cross omega so therefore the um, existence um, of local solution the existence of a local solution x epsilon t of the initial value problem dx epsilon by dt equals to f of epsilon t comma x epsilon and uh, x epsilon at t 0 is equals to x epsilon by 0 uh, is guaranteed if f epsilon t x uh, continuously depend uh, depends continuously on its parameter in the neighborhood uh, is guaranteed is guaranteed if f epsilon t comma x depends continuously continuously on its parameters epsilon t and x for some neighborhood of i epsilon i cross omega of 0 t 0 and x 0 epsilon right. So, basically um, this uh, continuous dependence we here we are saying that this continuous dependence is being written by a parameter epsilon right. So, regular perturbation. So, you are perturbing the problem by using a uh, a parameter uh, perturbation parameter epsilon. So, then basically it has been continuously uh, or regularly perturbed in a way and uh, then your initial value problem is now being written as a dx epsilon by dt. So, that uh, due to the perturbation uh, using the scaling parameter epsilon we are now writing it as dx epsilon by dt equals to f of x f of epsilon x uh, t or t comma x epsilon and initial condition is again perturbed and now it is being written as x epsilon at t 0 equals to x 0 x epsilon by 0. Now, the existence local existence at least can be guaranteed when f is a continuous function. So, that means when f epsilon t comma x depends continuously on its parameters uh, epsilon t and uh, x then uh, basically for uh, the, the then we have a local existence and it will exist in the neighborhood of that uh, initial point. So, initial point is for epsilon it is 0, for t it is t 0 and for x it is x 0, um, x 0 epsilon basically. So, around that uh, point there is a small neighborhood along with, uh, in which uh, the solution um, will exist that is x epsilon will exist and uh, we can put um, just like the previous theorem, uh, theorem 2 we can state a theorem 3 here uh, related to regular perturbation and it is uh, of this type um, theorem 3. So, this is continuous perturbation continuous perturbations. So, it tells us that let the vector field vector field f epsilon t comma x 
be continuous be continuous on i epsilon cross i cross omega uh, containing so this particular domain containing 0 t 0 and then x, x epsilon 0 so epsilon is in the superscript and let the initial value be continuous let the initial value be uh, continuous be continuous on i epsilon let f epsilon t comma x be Lipsis, Lipsis or Lipsis continuous. You can write Lipsis continuous. That is fine. Lipsis continuous. If the solution, if the solution x x epsilon uh, exists for all epsilon in i epsilon on an interval. j is equals to t0 to t0 plus capital T which is subset of phi uh, then x epsilon is continuous um, continuous in epsilon uniformly. On J. So, this tells us that it depends continuously on your uh, perturbed parameter, right. So, this is uh, one particular theorem. So, having f epsilon as Lipsis continuous, it will guarantee uh, the existence of the solution and uh, uh, on the interval, of course, small interval uh, t to t0 plus capital T, which is the subset of i, and then your x epsilon, the perturbed solution, will continuously uh, depend on this uh, perturbation basically. So, Therefore, we are saying then x epsilon is continuous uh, in epsilon uniformly, right. And uh, the proof is uh, simple. Let me just uh, say one example first and then we will talk about the proof. Uh, so, I will just state one example. Maybe in the next class we can look into the proof. So, just one straightforward example from this uh, particular theorem. So, consider the initial value problem x uh, dot t is equals to x plus r epsilon x and x at 0 it is really uh, uh, just an application of this and since uh, that uh, theorem is for x 1 x 2 x 3 that means n number of equations. So, we are just considering a scalar version of it um, just to understand the concept. So, from here uh, we can write with r epsilon x equals to um, uh, 0 if the perturbed parameter is less than 0 and equals to epsilon if the perturbed parameter is greater or equal to 0. So, the perturbation is continuous with respect to epsilon. So, here we can see that the perturbation when we when we added a small uh, epsilon in the problem that means on the right hand side again we are not adding anything in the initial condition at least for this example. So, we are adding a constant perturbation uh, uh, in, in this uh, right hand side. So, the perturbation is always there and uh, this perturbation is continuous with respect to epsilon of course, because at uh, uh, epsilon equals to 0 we have a continue uh, the right hand side is continuous, but it is not differentiable at epsilon equals to 0. And therefore, so this perturbation, this perturbation is continuous uh, with respect to uh, epsilon, but it is not differentiable at epsilon is equals to 0 and clearly the same 
holds for the solution. So, this particular example is giving us a very nice message or important message. So, if you write down the solution, then x epsilon t will be e to the power t uh, when epsilon is less than 0. That means, when there is no perturbation. But when there is a perturbation, you have 1 plus epsilon e to the power t minus of epsilon, epsilon is greater than or equal to 0. So, this particular example tells you that uh, your x epsilon t, uh, the solution, I mean suppose if there was a no perturbation, then for all t, you will get a solution which is always differentiable. Now, you introduced a continuous perturbation. Since that perturbation is only continuous, but it is not differentiable, the solution you got is also not differentiable at epsilon equals to c, right. So, this continuous dependence of x epsilon t on this perturbation is actually telling you that the, if the perturbation has a certain property, it will get carried over to the solution. And therefore, we have something called differentiable perturbation. So, you have continuous perturbation, then you have differentiable perturbation. So, we will state that theorem in the next class and uh, we will also see one more example related to differentiable perturbation and uh, that will conclude uh, uh, this portion of your uh, ordinary differential equation where we studied about local existence uh, where which covers the existence and the uniqueness then we looked into um, uh, global uh, existence and uh, then we looked into uh, continuous dependence on the initial data so one more theorem and then we'll conclude this portion so thank you for your attention and uh, i'll see you in the next class